السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا الحمد لله قد عم الخلائق رأفة وحنانا سبحانه تجري الرياح بأمره فتنبت الأرض أشجارا وأغصانا وبحار بطري اللحم زاخرة وأخرى تفيض عذبا لسقيانا وشمس تجود بالدفء ما بقي في الدنيا وما بخلت قرونا وأزمانا خلقنا من منية خلقت فكانت الأرحام مأوانا غذينا من غير جهد ومسألة فتكامل الخلق صورا وألوانا نحب وعين الله تكلؤنا والأب يسعى والأم ترعانا حتى إذا القوى فينا قد اكتملت كثرت معاصينا وعظمت خطايانا نسينا كيف كان منشأنا فكيف نسه عن الذي بفضله أبقانا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول في صحف ابراهيم عبدي لا تقنط من رحمتي عبدي لا تقنط من رحمتي ان كنت بالغدر موصوفا فانا بالجود معروف وان كنت ذا اساءه فانا ذو احسان وان كنت ذا جفاء فأنا ذو وفاء وإن كنت ذا غفلة فأنا ذو رحمة وإن كنت ذا خشية وإنابة 
فأنا ذو قبول وإجابة وأشهد أن سيدنا وإمامنا وقائدنا وحبيبنا رسول الله محمد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليك سيدي يا رسول الله Surely we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank him and we show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness openly that there is no God worthy of our worship except Allah. And I bear witness openly that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and the best of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last of the messengers of Allah. We are sending our salutations and our salam and our salah to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and actually to all the prophets and the messengers starting Adam all the way down to Noah, to Moses, to Jesus, to Abraham, to Isaac, to all the prophets and the messengers of Allah. Dear respected brothers and sisters, it is the time that we gather together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can learn and we can give the knowledge that will elevate our Iman and we try to recharge our batteries so we will be ready to continue the rest of the week to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to fulfill the duties towards Allah and the point that I wanted to share with you today and the topic that I wanted to highlight it is one of the most important topic that we want to deal with. And it is really important to understand the reality of our life. As you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned the six pillars of Iman in the Quran. You can read the last part of Surah Al-Baqarah. And one of them that we need to believe in the hereafter. We believe in the what is after life. And that is why you might ask yourself, what is my goal? What is my target? Are you aiming to stay in this dunya for, you know, permanent, for eternity? or we are going to leave one day. If you want to ask any person, whether he is a Muslim, non-Muslim, atheist, whatever, we all agree that we one day we will leave and we are going to die. No one will remain forever. That's why the hereafter or the akhirah is the permanent one and we have a temporary life. We are not going to stay here forever. And you might ask yourself, which one that I wanted to concentrate on? Which one that I wanted to focus on? Most of people, to be honest, they concentrate in this dunya as if they will live here for eternity. And today, all what I just wanted to share is one little point, but it could make the difference. And that's why I call it the advice that can change your life. How are you going to look at the dunya and to the hereafter? Sometimes, especially with the young generation, when they talk about this life, all what they think of that I want to enjoy my life. And there is a, an expression, they call it you all, means you just live once. So all what you need to, to enjoy that life. And the concept is contradicting with the concept of Islam. Not only this, when you see the pagans, the death believers during the time of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said, وَقَالُوا مَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهْ You know what? We are going to live once. It's only one life. 
and nothing can destroy us, can demolish us, except the time. The time is passing, we lose our life, and nothing after life. So we just live once. We should enjoy and take the, the, the utmost of this dunya. In Islam, we are completely different because we have this time in this dunya as a test. And we have another life that we are aiming to. We are looking for the other life. The second misconception that we have that some people think, you know what, I have the choice whether to choose the dunya and its pleasure and its entertainment or to choose the hereafter. If I chose dunya, I will not get hereafter. If I chose the akhirah, that means I will never get dunya, which is completely wrong. That's not accurate at all. Let me share with you what Allah had mentioned in Surah Al-Isra. Allah had explained to us that when, if you are a seeker of this dunya, in the akhirah, in the hereafter, you will have nothing. So even if you did something good, imagine if a non-Muslim, if an atheist, if somebody just give a charity, give a donation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, نُوَفِّهِ إِلَيْهِ Means what? We are going to give him a compensation for the good deeds that they made it in dunya. But what about the heat after? Allah said, وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ نَصِيبِ He will have no place, no share in the heat after. Oh Allah, so what about if I am a seeker of the hereafter, should, should you give me something in this dunya too? Listen to this. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةِ And whoever was a seeker of the hereafter. وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا And he exerted the efforts, his strive for this akhirah to get to. And he made the hereafter as his own target. That's my goal, to get the heat after, to go to Jannah, to be able to make it to Jannah. If that is my aim, Allah said, فَأُولَٰئِكَ Those people, كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Their efforts, their struggle, it's highly appreciated. <laughs> then Allah said, كُلَّا نُمِدُّ هَؤُلَاءِ وَهَاؤُلَاءِ مِنْ عَطَاءِ رَبِّهِ Both teams, we are going to provide them something. Even with the dunya? Yes. Even with the dunya. So if you are a seeker of the hereafter, that does not mean you will live in poverty here. That does not mean that you will not get any entertainment in this dunya. The opposite which is right. Listen to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he said, مَنْ كَانَكِ الدُّنْيَا هَمَّهِ If your goal, if your target, if your all intention is just to get dunya, what Allah is going to do with you? Allah will let you be always stressed out. And not, not only this, Allah said, وَجَعَلَ فَقْرَهُ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْهِ Those who are only thinking about dunya, they will live in poverty, or if they have money, they always be worried to be in poverty. How many people that you know, they have money, mashallah, alhamdulillah, good amount of money, but still he had the anxiety, he had that worry for losing his money. He had what is enough for him. He had what is even if he stayed the rest of his life, does not work. It would not finish. But subhanAllah, he is always have something inside his heart that he does not have the contemplation. 
He does not have the inner peace. Always worry about something. Scared of being poor again. That feeling will never ever make him happy. And why is that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I promised him that he will be always in poverty. Even if he had money, lots of people. Imam, I got a house. Alhamdulillah, masha'Allah. Be satisfied with Allah then. No. You know what? I'm looking for having a bigger house. He dreams of a car. Once he gets this car, after one week, you know what? I want to get the other car. And he told his wife, his children, you know what? My goal is to save that amount of money. Once he get that amount, yet he is not satisfied. I'm looking for more. And he's afraid to lose that, to be back in poverty, watching the, the stock market, afraid that it would be collapsed or something. He is in a state of anxiety always. Why? Because his main focus, his main concentration is not for the real actor. It's here for the dunya. And listen to this. The other side. If your goal is the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that He will bring all the affairs of dunya in your heart. Means what? Allah will fix everything for you. That's number one. Number two, وَجَعَلَ هِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ and he will make his richness, his happiness in his heart. Number three, which I consider it the most important point in this khutbah, as Rasulullah said, وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاهِمًا I don't know the English word that you can translate the hadith of Rasulullah with that beautiful expression means what the dunya itself will be dragged to him the dunya will be taken forcefully to serve him so if you are a seeker of the hereafter don't think that you lost dunya no dunya can you imagine if you are traveling to the to New York, for example, driving, and you have your car, do not have enough gas, do not have water or any food, how are you, how are you going to survive? Or even if you do not have money, how are you going to reach your destination? Imagine you are traveling now to the hereafter. You are traveling to Jannah and still you have nothing. Tazawwad. Tazawwad min hayatika lil ma'adi wa qum lillahi wajma' khayr zadi atarda an takuna rafiq qawm lahum zad wa anta bi ghayri zad. Do you accept that on the day of judgment you will have the righteous? You will have the companions, you will have the prophets and messengers. They came with millions and millions of the good deeds. And you have nothing. And you know what? And to be honest, when, when we decided to stand up on the mimba, we promised Allah to say the truth and nothing more than the truth. Not to say what people like. You know, we have lots of people here in this dunya and they are Muslims. They want to get all the enjoyment in this life, whether halal or haram, without any sacrifice, without any struggle. And they want to get everything to enjoy, to have fun. 
And at the end of the time, he want to be in Jannah next to Abu Bakr and Bilal ibn Rabah. Do you think that is fair? Do you think that is fair? Not to sacrifice anything in the dunya? Not to lose anything? He wanted money, give money from anywhere, halal or haram, it does not matter. Have relationships, have boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever you have, enjoy your life, hang out with that, curse that, say that word, you know, insult somebody. And at the end of the day, he says to you, Allahu Rahul Rahim, Allah the most gracious and the most merciful, and I will, I will be shoulder to shoulder next to Bilal. That's not right. Look at how Allah described this dunya. Allah said, وَمَا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَعِبُ وَلَهُ This dunya is nothing but play and lahu. You know, play, it's the game, it's the, the exercise that it might benefit your body. Someone plays soccer, someone plays basketball, so it will benefit him physically, but lahu is something different. Lahu means it's a waste of your time. It has no benefit. And that's how Allah looks at this dunya. You might think this dunya is a big deal. Just I wanna I wanna invite you to take you even after salah to the graveyards, to the cemetery. See by yourself. Where is the brothers? Where are the brothers and sisters? Subhanallah, think about this. How many times you attended Janaza and during that time you see they are throwing the dirt over your beloved one. And then you leave. Subhanallah. That's Ajib. It seems like he wasn't here. He didn't live. What about this dunya? He came from a country outside America. He struggled. He brought his family. He had a house, had a car. Used to work for a long time to do what? To secure their life. And all of a sudden, he passed away. Allah What will benefit him? Only his good deeds. That's the only thing. Tadakka. Tafakkar ya Muslim. Tafakkar fil mawti wa sakaratih. Wa su'ubat ka'sihi wa mararatih. فيا للموت من وعد ما أصدقه ومن حاكم ما أعدله وكفى بالموت مبكيا ومقرحا للعيون ومفرقا للجماعات وهاجما للذات وخاطعا للأمنيات فهل تفكرت بعد السرير والراحة وأنس الزوجة ومداعبة الأولاد صرت في قبرك وحيدا مرتهنا ولا يعلم بك إلا الله وكأن الله ينادي عليك فيقول عبدي رجعوا وتركوك وفي التراب دفروك ولو ظلوا معك ما نفعوك ولم يبق لك إلا أنا وأنا الحي الذي لا أموت تفكر and that's the reality that we are going to leave that dunya and meet with Allah. I told you before that we have a bank account. Bank account. It is called the hereafter bank account. The akhira bank account. You do, you do deposit here and you do withdraw in the hereafter. Just think about how much that you deposited to this bank account. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us, Allahumma ameen. May Allah guide us to the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower all of us with his mercy. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hada. Astaghfirullah ameen. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليك سيدي يا رسول الله My brothers and sisters before we finish the khutbah I just wanted to deliver the sincere advice from the bottom of my heart to each and every one that focus on the hereafter. Think about the time that you are going to die and you are going to meet with Allah. And think about the day of judgment. Think about your beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Think about that journey. Are you ready for that journey? Just imagine if we are praying Jumu'ah after the khutbah and while, if, while you are in the last sujood, imagine for a second that you had the angel of the death came to you and he told you, once you finish this salah, I will take your soul. Could you tell me for how long you will stay having sujood? For how long? For how long you will make that sujood? That's why you might hear the Imam say, Salli salata muwadda. Pray as it is the last prayer. Pray as it is the farewell prayer. That's in Islam. That you have to think about what are you going to say to Allah? You know lots of people here in this dunya, you know what, I want to own something. I want to own house. I want to own car. Just let me ask you, do you think that we own something? Do you think that we have that, that term, that we own something? No. The reality is that no one owns anything. We do not own anything. Who is the Malik? Allah. You and I recite Maliki Yawmiddin. In another way of recitation, Maliki Yawmiddin. He is the king of the kings. And Allah will demonstrate this reality on the day of judgment. When Allah will rule up all the heavens and earth and he will ask that question that Allah has mentioned in Surah Ghafir. Allah will say, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ To whom is the kingdom today? And no one could answer. Where are the dictators? Where are the oppressors? Where are the apples? Where are they thought that they, they are something. Just think about this. If you die tomorrow, do you think that the, the universe will stop? No. The sun will rise. People will go to their job. Your wife and your children will continue to eat and drink. Life goes on. That's the reality. So remember this. And put your goal. What's your ultimate goal? Is to make it to Jannah. I will not live here forever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran to be mindful of the hereafter. May Allah guide us to the right path, Allahumma ameen. I'mal lidari, radan ridwanu khazinuha, wal jaru ahmad, wal rahmanu nashiha, 
قصورها ذهب والمس طينتها والزعفران حشيش نابت فيها والطير تجري على الاوصان عاكفه تسبح الله جهرا في معاليها ايها الاحبه الدنيا ساعه اجعلوها طاعه النفس طماعه عودوها القناعه اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا اللهم توفنا مسلمين والحقنا بالصالحين واحشرنا يا ربنا في زمره خير المرسلين اللهم يا ربنا اصلح عاقبتنا في الامور كلها اللهم اصلح عاقبتنا في الامور كلها واشرح لنا صدورنا وتوفنا مسلمين واجمعنا بنبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم واقم الصلاه قوموا الى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله